Good morning, and thank you for coming out today. I'd like just to give you a quick update on the events uh, that happened last night here in North Attleboro with some significant rain and flooding that we had overnight. Starting around 6 p.m., uh, North Attleboro saw about five inches of rain in a span of three to four hours, coupled with a significant rainfall uh, from the Saturday before. The town has seen uh, approximately 10 inches of rain in the past 72 hours. Uh, last night's storm did cause significant damage uh, to a number of homes and roads throughout the town. And uh, currently sections of Hoppin Hill Road, or Hoppin Hill Avenue, excuse me, and Old Post Road are closed uh, due to infrastructure concerns. And our public works team and crews are out there right now uh, working hard to get these roads opened. Um, as of this morning, approximately 200 homes were reported to have had flood damage uh, in and around town. Uh, the North Adderall Police and Fire Departments have responded to over 150 calls for service uh, last night alone, uh, coupled with the number of calls for service we had on Saturday as well. And the majority of these are related to flooding and water issues. Uh, we made the decision last night to stand up our emergency operations center, and that was activated, and we did declare a state of emergency last night uh, to close the roads to allow our public safety teams uh, access uh, to the roads and ask folks to shelter in place for a few hours last night. We are continuing to monitor the weather, uh, and we do uh, acknowledge that there's a hurricane coming that we're watching. We got our eye on that as well, but we know there's rain in the forecast for tomorrow and this weekend as well. Uh, let me just start out, though, first by uh, a very heartfelt thank you to our first responders uh, who immediately jumped into action uh, last night and over the weekend as a part of this response. Uh, their professionalism, dedication, and selfless service really reflects uh, how great of a, a community this is. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, the MEMA, uh, Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency, American Red Cross, Liberty Utilities, and the Mansfield uh, MEMA CERT program who all came to our assistance last night. Uh, Residents who still have issues or concerns, I would like you to, you know, let you know that the town is here to help. Please call 508-695-1212. And again, any resident that needs help, please call us, let us know. I also encourage you to download uh, the Code Red app. Uh, that is a, a management system that we use for notification here, as well as uh, C-Click Fix. Uh, that we use that you can report any kind of issues that you're having. Uh, at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Mark Hollowell, our Director of Public Works. Good morning, Mark Hollowell, H-O-L-L-O-W-E-L-L. -L -L -E -L -L. I'm the Director of Public Works. Uh, so this is the actually uh, second large event that we've had in three days on uh, Saturday afternoon. We had a significant storm over four inches in our downtown area which is exacerbated by the 10 Mile River, which flows behind us and through the downtown, flooding a number of areas and businesses throughout town. Uh, our team spent a number of hours here cleaning that up on Saturday, spent all day Monday cleaning the roads, clearing the catch basins, uh, only to have a storm last night of about five inches uh, that uh, the ground was saturated. We had a significant amount of undermining of roadways, a number of uh, locations that were temporarily uh, blocked and we had a number of residents who ignored the blocked uh, areas and decided to drive their cars through there anyway getting them uh, stuck making our work more difficult uh, one of the things people need to know in events like this you really need to stay off the road if you can you really need to abide by the uh, barricades that we have set up uh, it just makes our job more difficult you know I had a number of personnel in it's already difficult when you have falling trees, roadways that you can't tell whether or not they're undermined, uh, and having to deal with stranded motorists just makes it more difficult. Uh, we are continuing the operations today. We've already worked on re repairing one road to get it back into service. Uh, we have several others that we're working on, and then we start working on issues uh, going back towards uh, people's driveways and, and other potholes and things like that, uh, making sandbags and gearing up for our next storm, uh, which is uh, some rain tomorrow, and then more during the weekend. I do want to thank my DPW staff for doing an excellent job last night. It was not easy and they were all back at it uh, at six o'clock this morning. So I do appreciate the efforts of uh, my staff as well as the fire department, electric department and police uh, for all their assistance in this uh, endeavor. Uh, Chief. Good morning everybody. Uh, Chris Coleman, C-H-R-I-S. 
C-O-L-E-M-A-N. I'm the Fire Chief and the Emergency Management Director for North Attleboro. I'd like to start by thanking the members of the North Attleboro Fire Department, Police Department, Public Works, Electric, Town Employees, and our mutual aid partners last night. This is one of the most severe storms I've seen in my career as a firefighter for the last 26 years in the town. Of how quickly the rain came down and how quickly the water rose overnight. Our crews made over a dozen rescues last night from vehicles and houses in the south end of town. We received mutual aid from over 20 communities last night. From as far away as Wayham and Onset to Smithfield, Rhode Island, we activated the Bristol County Technical Rescue Team uh, with their swift water assets to assist with evacuations. We also activated a structural task force within the fire mobilization plan throughout the state, bringing those fire apparatus in. In total, we had about 120 firefighters in town last night handling 150 calls of service. We had all the calls cleared for the most part by midnight last night, and today we're still uh, receiving calls for flooded basements and people in need. As Mr. Borg stated, we're closely monitoring the weather for the next couple days and with the hurricane potentially off our coast over the weekend, and we're prepared. At this time, uh, I'll give it over to Mr. Borg again. Nope. Pete Schiffman. All right. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Peter Schiffman, North Attleboro Electric Department, S-C-H-I-F-F-M-A-N. Um, I'm the general manager, and I just want to first uh, thank the folks, our, our line crew that came out last night. We're a small municipal electric department. We cover just the North Attleboro territory. Um, last night we had a, uh, you know, an unprecedented type of event, something that's very difficult to prepare for because it's flooding. Uh, typically we deal with rain, wind, right? Wind is usually the number one enemy for us. The flooding is what really got us. We had some linemen uh, who had to leave their families, had flooding in their basement, things like that. So, I mean, uh, real kudos goes out to them for getting us back in power this morning to everybody that we have. Around 6 o'clock last night is when uh, things started to, to, to uh, escalate for us. We had... Uh, the south end of town, around the mall, we had a tree actually come down on a, a large switch pole behind the mall, which took out customers going back to our substation on Landry Avenue, all the way down to the southwest part of town. Right when we were thinking that was clear, the flooding is what caused uh, another switch to go uh, and trip. Uh, actually completely fail, complete meltdown, uh, down by uh, the south end of town off of Route 1 near the old Christmas tree shop building, Guitar Center, that area. Uh, the issue was there was about three feet of water. We couldn't access the equipment till two or three hours after that uh, event. And then we were able to get in there, assess the damage, uh, and sure enough, the, the water that had gotten into that uh, switch uh, caused a failure, which took out two additional circuits. Most of it was commercial and industrial customers down on the uh, south end of Route 1. But by 1045 last night, we had the majority of customers back in service. We had about 30 um, commercial industrial customers still out of power we had uh, we still have some issues or scattered incidents where we have uh, customers whose basements are flooded unsafe conditions uh, and we have pulled power from that to try to create a uh, safer environment for them um, as of this morning all of uh, route one is back in service and uh, our switch was replaced uh, six of our line crew and a number of our substation folks and meter department were out all night uh, checking in with uh, police, fire. I was part of the EOC for a little while last night until we broke down and re reassembled this morning. So uh, great job to the town, great job to the fire, DPW, everybody's on top of it here. Uh, it's actually a, a joy to be part of the team here, so thank you. All right, at this time uh, we'll take your questions. Uh, can you just explain to us some of the rescues that took place last night? Were they all <clears throat> So we had uh, a variety of vehicles, uh, people trapped in them uh, in the southwest part of town, specifically in the Payne Road area. Uh, additionally, we had a section of uh, Payne Road in the area 392. We had about a dozen homes that were completely underwater. We sent a task force down there led by the Foxborough Fire Chief, uh, and they made contact with all of the residents in that area. Uh, we did evacuate one uh, resident that went to a family uh, residence uh, for shelter, and the other is sheltered in place. Uh, as the water was quickly receding. Now, East Street floods all the time. Residents in that complex over there, their cars are still trapped. What's your advice to people as they navigate the upcoming storm? So uh, we work closely with 21 East Street regarding this. There is a parking plan, an emergency plan in place. I would encourage the residents to uh, speak with the, uh, the, the management company over there and follow the emergency plan that they have and monitor the weather closely over the next couple of days.
Yeah, E Street, obviously, uh, that goes for, for any street, right? Uh, turn around, don't drown is, is, is a key phrase. Uh, if you see flooded waters, do not drive through it. Um, the car is not going to make it, and then it's just going to require you to be rescued by the fire department. Chief, any injuries? People sent to the hospital, anything like that last night? So, no civilian injuries. Uh, we did have a, um, a firefighter injured. Um, he's stable, and that's what I have right now for information. Chief, there were posts on social media last night that an elderly woman, basement was flooding, what should I do? People said, call the fire department, they'll pump out the basement. Is that something you do? No, right now we don't uh, pump out basements. Um, in consultation with uh, with uh, DEP many years ago, there was concerns about um, items in the basements. So uh, we refer them to a restoration company. We will come out, investigate, check the utilities to make sure that they are um, uh, okay. And if we have to isolate them to reduce any fire threat, we'll do that. You know, I asked somebody from the town a question. Um, you know, we see flooding over here all the yep. time. When it comes to the planning board, what type of preparation went into that? And why was the project allowed to move forward? So that, that area has flooded uh, for decades now, and uh, we've worked with the company. We've had engineering studies done, uh, and Mark can talk about the, the, the number of different uh, planning board. That predated my time here as the town manager, uh, but it's been an ongoing issue, and we've worked with both the leasing company and the residents to uh, come to a resolution and resolve that. But it, it has historically flooded over the, over the years. So what's the resolution? There is a parking plan, an emergency parking plan that's in place that the, that they agreed to with the planning board, uh, and there's a notification system. Uh, we've met with the uh, management company in the past and talked to, through what their responsibilities were. Right? If residents have an issue, uh, feel free to reach out to us, right? And also reach out to the the management company about that parking situation. Last question: What areas are you most concerned about with the upcoming rain? That's still going to be here for the next week. I'll let Mark answer that because I, I, I know it, it's probably roadways is what I'd say. But emergency preparedness and making sure people are safe. Yeah, one of the things you got to understand is especially after a storm after storm like this, the roads start to get saturated. Sometimes they get undermined and uh, which so everyone understands undermine is the gravel that is under the asphalt uh, gets eroded away. The asphalt being four to six inches thick in some places will actually bridge over that uh, and at some point, if you keep getting these types of rainstorms, uh, it might have catastrophic failure. And that's one of the issues. If we block off a road and people drive through it, you might not just be driving through a puddle. You might be driving through a four foot hole. Um, you know, there are areas in town where we literally had a gravel road that had uh, three or four foot wide by two and a half foot deep rut over 100 feet on the road. Uh, that absolutely would have destroyed a car, possibly killed somebody if they drove into it uh, without knowing about it. We went out and addressed that uh, as an emergency, but that, that's probably our biggest concern now, as well as as we're getting into this storm. We had a little bit last night, right at the end of the storm, where it's so saturated uh, that, that tree root systems get undermined and those start falling around. If you have a storm coming up that has a high wind, these last two storms did not have a high wind, so we didn't worry about that. But moving forward with a hurricane coming, if you have gale force winds uh, with saturation like this, you could easily overtop some trees. And where did you see those extreme cases? Uh, that, those were all in the south part of town where we got over five inches. Uh, Rosanna Road was one of those. Uh, as we mentioned, Hoppin Hill and Old Post Road uh, along the Seven Mile River where uh, the roadway was completely eroded, exposing drainage, uh, almost knocking over a telephone pole uh, and cutting out a, uh, a bridge that connects us to the city of Attleboro. So if you're in this area, probably the best idea to not go in your car if you don't necessarily have to. Nope. Right, yeah, if you're having a severe storm and you can't, uh, you can't assure yourself that the road in front of you is safe, turn around and go back and wait for it to end. Uh, our roads actually, the, you know, uh, drainage systems are built for a 25-year storm. So they're built for two, three inches over the course of a day. Our drainage system will take that, that very well. You get three or four inches within an hour. Most drainage systems can't handle that, but they do catch up. So most of our town, you know, within an hour or two after it stopped raining, was caught back up. We do have some areas that are low lying or have other issues that back up, but it's in the residents best interest to stay home, watch it rain, same thing when it snows, stay home, wait for it to finish, uh, and then go out and start to uh, assess any damage. All right, thank and you, you everybody. The about the river over there? Every day. <laughs> so, any movement on that? <clears throat>
Here, I, I can talk to that. So uh, we have worked closely with uh, Congressman Auchincloss, and we've secured uh, a couple of earmarks to help us with the 10 Mile River uh, dredging uh, project that we've uh, been talking about. It's been talked about for a long time. Uh, but I also look at this as, as a regional uh, issue. It, it can't just be dredging in North Attleboro alone. Uh, the 10 Mile River runs through a couple of communities, right? We're reaching out and starting to work with all the other, both Plainville uh, and Attleboro, uh, because if we don't, if we dredge in our part, the sediment from Plainville will just come down and fill it in. Uh, but we've been actively working that and securing funds. And I know Mark's done some engineering uh, studies for us. And so we're looking to probably start that as soon as possible and put the funding in place to make it happen. Thank you.